uh, we have Vicky Angel. And she has her, her posse back there. But Vicky, Vicky was in the class with me and, and Alyssa and, and Laura. And um, I, just, I just have to say, come up here. <laughs> um, I, just, I think she's such a beautiful, elegant woman. And um, in that class, she wrote these poems that are just like, they, they exist still in my mind as these big, epic, uh, just almost like paintings. Because I, I see all of the scenes, the tree, um, the woman in the tent. It's just, uh, her, her poems just really touched me. And so I'm really glad that she's reading tonight. Um, she uh, taught at Washington, uh, the University of Washington, and uh, where you were also a student. And you have um, an interest in where you're haunted by the Holocaust. And, uh, so we a lot about that. Um, so here she is, everyone, Vicki Angel. And a shout out to my family and friends. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to read three poems tonight. Um, two I realize are for my grandmothers, one for my paternal grandmother who I never um, met. She was actually murdered in the Holocaust and my um, maternal grandmother who I knew very well. So the first one is for um, my grandmother Ventura. It's called Hair. It lies in dense mounds in a row of gleaming cases second floor, block four of the barracks, two tons of it, 4,000 pounds of it, haystocks, mountains, muddled mass of it, heaps and heaps of hair, straight hair, coiled hair, hair fine as spiders' webs, tight knots of long strands, a chaos of curls, amber hair, auburn hair, hair the color of dark plums, elegant waves, hair plaited into braids, black hair, chestnut hair, salt and pepper and brassy blonde, hair that remembers wind, hair brushed by mothers after baths, Stella's hair, knotted hair, hair the color of alleyways at dusk, hair coiffed, sprayed, and stiff as rigor mortis, This next poem is a fairly recent poem, and it's in 10 parts, so bear with me. The parts are fairly short. It's called Irises. One, surely I should have known the irises, deep purple bruises, yellow tongues on fire, wild flames on the far side of the house. Surely I should have sensed something in their silent profusion. Two, I have written poem after poem, Father, to find you, still sitting in your armchair, drowning in the television. There was one for your mother's black mane, shocked white in a day, one for your kid brother's missing body. After you told me you found a bone near the barracks, choked back every ounce of it, I wrote another. I placed them all in your palm. You return them to me, irises, something alive, organic, fragrance of meat smoldering on an altar. Three, father of silence of onyx eyes, father of the broken back, highway father of long distances with no God, statue father, severed arms, wingless father, tongue torn, father whose language lies flat on its back and is raped. The iris's jaw is dropped and silently screaming. The terrible irises tremble in terror of what? For in the garden of the asylum at St. Paul de Masol, Vincent painted irises to prevent himself going mad. These are the same flowers in the yard of the house I raised up in. They grew on a mound the same size as a coffin, the plot built up with a squat wall of stones, a few steps, then the walkway leading to the kitchen door, 
with its small curtained window and a lock hanging for its life to the jam. I dreamt again and again a menacing force just beyond ran for the lock, but it could not hold and I could see the monster, father, in the window, irises tangled, wild, five, Tall iris of the strong spine, sword tongue, proud one, bend closer that I might tell you the secret, how the house was filled with secrets, phantoms in the hallways, faceless ones finding their way by touch of walls, that I could hear them thrashing in the attic, father face purpled with anger at what? Once after you hurt us, I thought I heard you crying. The sound was a ship's call far out at sea and going down. And once you drove away, we didn't see you for three days. Six, tissue-tongued irises, fragile tongues, ripped transparent by fall the muddled masses, bent at the stem by winter fronds, brown petals wasting. Irises folded in their open air grave, your mother and father folded. I have never seen you cry for them, O oh powerful one. When will you mourn for them? Last night I dreamt I was terrified. I would not cry for you. Funny how I couldn't stop. You were dead, but standing your pallor, the color of rain doing silly tricks, one where it looks like your thumb has come undone, then made whole again. You wanted me to laugh, covering things up again. Seven, if there was a rending of clothes, if ashes, if spitting a litany of the foulest words, if moaning a howl, if tearing of hair, if heaving, beating, if there were graves, we'd bring irises that you might know us. Eight, I have taken myself down this long path to sunbathe in the backyard. How could we predict the sheet on the clothesline shepherding the wind, resurrection of old ghosts, masses of irises tangled in the corner of my eye, this ruse of becoming whole, father, Will you and I ever be done with our hearts, defective beaters? In my 53rd year, as I remember the things you said, I still feel like I want to disappear. Sometimes I have to check the mirror to see that my face is still there. Nine. At first the buds are shut tight and I closed in the deepest night. Behind it, this dream promise of purple bulbs deep in the earth's mass grave. For a while, I washed dead bodies just to see if I could take it. My partner helps me roll the body on its side so I can wash her back. How quickly the blood stills itself, pools and purple flowers, so many bodies. Sometimes we'd casket four in a day. So many bodies piled one on the other. Looking back, maybe it was my way of coming to terms. 10. Each winter, our gardener, an old drunk we nicknamed Ray Bolger, cut back the last of the brown foliage. How his hands shook when he sat at the table while mother made him sandwiches, poured him beer to stop his shakes. When he cleared out the last of the refuse, there were bulbs exposed at the surface, some conjoined and looking like stumps of amputated limbs. So many limbs and broken bodies and father, only to survive that. And each day after that, my constant reckoning, the irises' tender shoots, each May, the bright green air 